okay so good morning uh, in the previous class i was discussing about the uh, like different technology nodes uh, today i will discuss about the uh, the circuit designing especially mouse wheel size circuit uh, especially static cmos circuit designs and other things because uh, we have already understand how the uh, device behaves and what are the characteristics of various device like p p type devices or n type devices and we also know that their characteristics like when they will turn on and they will turn off okay and based on this functionality uh, we can say like uh, definitely uh, we can design some circuit uh, based on those those uh, particular devices so uh, in this particular lecture uh, i will discuss about how to design the static cmos circuits and what are the basic requirement especially if i am talking about the designing perspective so uh, i will start with this so, so uh, one of the simplest circuit uh, which is uh, uh, which we can design in the cmos circuit is the basic inverter circuit okay so we will start our analysis with the inverter and then we will extend our analysis for the bigger circuits like and gate or gate then we will try to implement some boolean function as well okay so uh, why i am targeting uh, the inverter only because uh, the inverter is truly a, a, a nucleus of all the digital designs right so uh, if you know the fundamental of inverter in that case definitely you can uh, design other circuits as well as based on those fundamentals okay and this is the reason why uh, we need to start our analysis with the uh, cmos inverter itself okay so uh, if we have the idea how to uh, design then we can go for the bigger circuit so let us try to start building a simple circuit which is the mos inverter circuit okay so if we can recall the this like in the digital system design we have studied in the second year like the inverter looks like this okay so the basic inverter characteristics is something like this uh, this is the simple symbol if i am giving some input then i will get some output y okay and this is reciprocal to each other like y will be nothing but this is the complement of the function whatever we have okay and ideally what i am assuming i am assuming that the uh, the behavior of any inverter should be in a such a way that if the input is at logic low in that case suppose uh, this is the input state scale let us assume this is the input and this is the output okay so uh, if the characteristics is something like this like okay so this particular state up to this one we can indicate like the logic one output okay so this is nothing but this is logic one output and similarly this particular state we call it logic zero output so this is the basic fundamental like uh, how the inverter looks like and how it works but if i have to design a particular uh, mos inverter or cmos inverter why i am calling it mos this is really very important and there is a big difference between the cmos and the mos structure okay if i am saying like mos structure the design this i am just telling this is really very important if i am talking about the mos structure it means that the circuit can have either pmos or n mos okay but the cmos means if both kind of devices are present in the circuit we call it cmos circuit complementary because we are utilizing both kind of transistors either pmos or n mos transistor so uh, we'll try to understand all these things uh, one very important thing like if i'm talking about the inverter circuit in that case two things are really very uh, uh, two or let us say four things are really very important the first important thing that need to be considered is the cost okay so the first and important parameter for any of the circuit is the cost cost means it's not about the money it's about the complexity 
it's about the area requirement how much complex your circuit is how much area it require while fabricating on the chip so that is defined with the cost of the circuit okay so ideally the cost or the area of any function should be as small as possible suppose i am implementing one boolean function with 10 transistor for example and the same boolean function is implemented with the let us assume eight transistors so the eight transistor design is more energy uh, area efficient as compared to the 10 transistor device so uh, here research comes into the picture like whatever uh, the circuit you are designing whatever the logic uh, function you are implementing you must optimize in all the way either number of transistors or or uh, uh, about the power dissipation or about the delay so all these parameters must be optimized to get the better results in any of the circuits okay and this this is this becomes the real research problem especially in the vlsi design so one of the parameter that need to be considered is the cost second parameter you need to consider that is the integrity and the robustness okay so uh, integrity and robustness means what? Let me write it first. Okay, so integrity and robustness uh, that expressed by the behavior, like how the circuit is behaving, what is the steady uh, state response, how, how the static behavior is, so all these things is defined by the integrity. Suppose I have a CMOS inverter. For example, I have an inverter. I have a two logic state. One is the logic zero and the second one is logic one. Okay. And suppose uh, to design that particular circuit, if I am using the uh, zero volt for the logic low, and let us assume zero point, uh, 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 let us assume one volt for logic high. Let me repeat it again. Suppose I am designing a circuit having two logic levels. One is logic zero and the second one is logic one. Let us consider logic zero is represented with the zero volt and logic one is represented with the one volt, for example. Okay. So if I am designing the inverter and I'm expecting that if the inverter input is logic zero, I should get one volt at the output and the vice versa. Okay. And if somehow I, I used to manage the complete voltage range so that we can say that the design is robust. In other side, if suppose I have, a, I have designed a circuit having two voltage ranges like zero volt and one volt for logic zero and logic one, but at the output, I am getting some degraded output, something like uh, in place of zero volt, I am getting 0 0.1 volt as a logic low. And in place of one volt, I am getting, let us assume, 0 0.9 volt at the logic high. So there is some degradation in both the logics. And if there is some degradation in both the logics, noise margin will degrade. What is this noise margin? I will tell you. Okay. So all these parameters are really very important that robustness should be as high as possible. So, uh, so that you can have the better noise margin, better noise immunity. Okay. And integrity means what? Like simply, uh, suppose uh, you have designed some circuit and if there is no drop, so you can make the integrity, we can, we can trust on the device uh, design, like, yes, it will give a perfect logic, but as per the expectation, okay? So this is the second parameter that need to be considered, especially if I'm going for the MOS based circuit designing. Third and the very important parameter that is the, the performance, okay? So the performance is really very important. Uh, the performance uh, means uh, the either you can consider the dynamic performance or like delay, power, and other things. Like how how much delay uh, delay how 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 much delay it has. Like input to output delay that is very important. So the delay should be as small as possible. Second important parameter could be like the power distribution. How much power efficient it is. So all these parameters must be considered, especially if I'm targeting, if I'm considering the CMOS based or MOS based structures. Okay. So the performance becomes the uh, really very important parameter, and that it, that that is determined by the uh, the dynamic response or the transient response. So the integrity and the robustness is uh, uh, expressed by the steady state response, whereas the performance 
is determined by the transient response okay or the or the dynamic response third and very important parameter is like the the energy efficiency okay i already consider on the performance but energy efficiency separately you can explain this one like the energy efficiency so energy efficiency becomes also one of the parameter that is that that need to be considered especially if i am talking about the cmos based structure so this is all about the mos structure now let us talk about few things which are really very important uh if i have to make a uh, a mos based inverter or mos based logic so two things are really very important in the mos based logic one thing is the uh, the load side and the another thing is the driver side so let me draw the structure first then you will be able to understand what i am saying so in any of the cmos circuit you have two modules the first module is called load and the second module is called the driver okay and you need to provide the input to the load and driver both side and the important thing is the load is connected between the output and the maximum potential whatever you have let us assume we have the vdd and similarly the driver is connected between the lower potential and the output okay so this is really very important so a uh, very important thing is in case if i want to pass the vdd to the output then load should be activated okay and in case i want to pass logic low to the output voltage the driver should be activated so this is the important thing that that is really important but the the, the, the thing you you may ask one thing what is this load and what is this driver how we can make this load and this driver so because our discussion is on mos based structure definitely inside this load and the driver there will be some transistors like uh, either it could be pmos or it could be nmos so but the question is which kind of transistor should be inside the load and which kind of transistor should be there in place of driver uh, like uh, whether it will be pmos or it will be nmos so this is really very tricky question and that will be answered in few slides okay and this is really very important to understand which of the device or which of the transistor either pmos or nmos is best suited for load and which of the transistor is best suited for the driver okay it is not necessary that always you can keep pmos and nmos uh, interchangeably right you cannot use like uh, pmos in place of driver for some time and nmos uh for the driver for some time it is not like that there is something something needed some analysis is important some parameter need to be analyzed before putting any of the transistor either in the load or in the driver so i will explain you in detail which kind of transistor should be in the load and which kind of transistor should be in the driver uh before moving into the actual circuit implementation i need to explain few things and uh, and those things are uh, the noise margin i just discuss i just uh, raise one concern like noise margin in the noise immunity is the really very important thing okay in the in the circuit uh, analysis so how we can calculate those noise margin let us try to discuss okay so uh, suppose i have a cmos inverter for example i have a inverter and um, let us assume this one and ideally i am assuming that the behavior should be something like this one okay so this should be something like behavior this is the ideal behavior whatever i am expecting okay so uh, let us try to make the bigger picture of this behavior in inverter behavior and try to understand the noise margin of the inverter or cmos inverter let us assume i have the input voltage and here we have the output voltage and if it is the inverter in the previous slide we explained one thing like the basic structure of the uh, basic output characteristics or transfer characteristics or vtc of the inverter looks like this one this figure middle one okay but 
this is the ideal case ideal case means what if uh, up to the certain voltage let us assume let me explain few more things about this one uh let us assume this point is zero volt okay and this maximum point is let us assume vdd okay so i am assuming that to make any circuit a perfect inverter the logic change should be after the half of the maximum supply voltage let me repeat it again this is zero potential zero volt and let us assume this point is the one volt okay so the logic swing uh, like from zero to high that there should be some transition at the mid of the maximum voltage like the 50% of the vdd okay so ideally like if the input is from 0 to vdd by 2 the logic will be high which will act as a logic high and once it crosses the vdd by 2 the output will becomes low so this is the complete ideal characteristics like we have distinguished based on the value whatever we have so here we have let us assume vdd by 2 and let us assume this one is zero and let us assume this is vdd and this is what we have uh, differentiated two different logics but this is the ideal characteristics it is not possible that the, the there is zero time to switch from one logic to another logic this is only because i just told you before uh, the, uh, the the charging and discharging is very uh, important in any of the circuit and if the charging is there means it can charge to high logic and if discharging is there then it can discharge to the low logic but there is no zero charging and discharging time in any of the circuit so you cannot make the zero rise time and zero fall time there will be some finite rise time and the fall time so uh, the sudden fall which you are seeing here like high to low and low to high okay this is not possible in reality in practical so this is ideally this is possible but practically this is not possible so how the practical practical behavior will look like and how to calculate the noise margin let us try to understand in the next slide okay so uh, here sir? yeah please sir in the previous slide that block diagram what you have drawn about load and driver that is a generic block diagram for uh, cmos circuits or specific to mos inverter no 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 this is uh, generic for all kind of cmos circuit okay is if i'm talking about the cmos circuit so cmos means complementary metal oxide semiconductor right so that load that the transistor which with the kind of transistor i have placed in the load is complementary to the kind of transistor i have placed in the driver for example i have placed the pmos transistor in the load so the i need to place nmos transistor in the driver and the both the transistor should be connected with the same input how it can be made i will explain in the two uh, after two slides just wait and then your, your doubt will be clear okay but yes for now uh, this uh, the input is given to both the load and drivers and the types of transistors are different in both the blocks and this is generic diagram for cmos based circuit designing this is not only for the inverter okay yeah this is also for inverter but this is generic for the cmos circuits any other function if you are going to implement then you can use this block diagram okay so i will explain in detail later on just wait a two more uh, like five more minute then i will explain you okay so uh, let me dis i just in the previous slide i just discussed about uh, the uh, how the ideal characteristics of inverter looks like but practically it is not possible okay so there could be some possibility like there is some high voltage okay and there is no sudden fall ideally i am assuming that it should be something like this but this is not possible practically it will take some time to change the logic and there will be some finite time to uh, to change the logic from high to low and then again after reaching here it will take some something like this so the characteristics is something like this okay let me uh, change some structure yeah so let us assume the characteristics is something like this okay so now from this figure let us try to analyze the things how this behavior comes like i just told you in the previous if the input is less than vdd by 2 then it will treat as a logic uh, low and if the input is so like i am i'm increasing the input voltage something like this like a ramp okay so if it is less than vdd by 2 
then I'm assuming that it should be high. And if it is greater than VDD by two, it should be uh, logic low. So now uh, from this particular point, let us try to understand few things. Okay. First thing which we can observe, the logic high is maintained for certain period of time or uh, for some input voltages. So we call this logic level is V O H. V O H means this is the Y axis is the output. And because this is the high voltage, so we are calling it V O H. So V O H is, uh, is, is nothing but this is the output high voltage. Okay. Similarly, next and very important thing here, we can see this particular point. This is the output voltage and this is giving like low logic. So we call it VOL. So VOL is the low output logic. Similarly, if I have to calculate VIL and VIH, in that case, the two important points need to be considered. I need to find, like see, initially in this case, let me explain in detail. So suppose the graph is uh, like the, the, the characteristics is moving from logic low to logic high, and there is some finite time that takes to change a logic from high to low, okay? At certain period of time, there may be slope which is equal to minus one. Okay, so because the input is changing from high to low, so there is some slope here, there is some slope here as well, and there is some slope here as well. Okay, so there are three different slopes. One is from here to here, second one is from here to here, and the third one is in between this point to this point. Okay, so uh, to calculate other two points, what I have to do, I have to find a point, let us assume this is the point where the slope is minus one. Okay, so let us assume this slope is minus one and we call this is dv out divided by dv in is equal to minus one. Okay, so, uh, so this, this is this we call like the uh, unity, slope, unity point or unity slope point. Okay, similarly, here we can also have some points that, like let us assume here we have points something like this, and this point is also like dv out divided by dv in that is minus one. Okay, so based on these values, we can say that the points with the first point when the logic is changing from high to low. The first negative, like a unity gain point, is known as this voltage is known as VIL. Let me repeat it again. The first unity gain point, uh, when the output is changing from high to low, is known as VIL. Whereas this point, the second unity gain point, is known as VIH. Okay, ideally, this VI and VIH should be same and that should be is equal to VDD by two. Let me repeat it again. If you go to the previous slide, in the previous slide, we saw like that there is sudden fall from high to low. Okay, and the, the, the change is logic and uh, logic low to high and high to low. Uh, that the, the voltage is same, like it is VDD by two. So ideally, it should be same, VIL and VIS should be same, and that should be equal to VDD by two, but practically it is not possible. So we call it something like this, okay? Uh, you can note one more point. If I'm increasing the input like a ramp, I'm observing the output behavior like whatever I have shown in the blue color, okay? The point when, input and outputs are crossing to each other, there is one more point, okay? And then we call it Vm, okay? So this voltage, we call it Vm, which is the mid voltage. And this mid voltage is known as the threshold voltage of the circuit. Let me repeat it again, what is this? The point at which input ramp and the output behavior is crossing to each other that point is known as vm mid voltage or 
the threshold voltage of the circuit this threshold voltage of the circuit is different from the threshold voltage of the transistor this is not like vth in the transistor this is the different than the vth okay so what this indicate this voltage or this uh, the crossing voltage indicates that after this logic the logic will become low and before that it should be logic high and that that is decided by the mid voltage okay so this is how the the characteristics in uh, uh, reality looks like okay so this is the vt uh, like uh, vtc characteristics of the practical inverter circuit now once we got okay so in case anyone has any doubt let me know uh, i will explain these things uh, in detail otherwise we can move ahead with the other things anyone Okay, so if you don't have any doubt, so let us talk about the other things like the noise margin. Okay, so uh, yeah, so here we have in, in this particular circuit, we have two critical points uh, where the, the gain is minus one. So we call those points as a unity gain point. And yes, of course, you can see here uh, in between these two unity gain points, the, the slope is a uh, sudden fall is there. Okay, so if sudden fall is there, what it means? Uh, let me let me explain one more thing. This is really very important before going into the detail. Okay, so suppose uh, our uh, behavior is something like this, for example. And if you see here, there are two points. One point is this one, and the second point is this one. In this, in the same previous one only. Okay, and now if you see here, this is the input, and this one is the V output. Okay, now if you see in this region. Like, let us assume this is the point A and this is the point B, okay? So before point A, we have the fixed logic, which is logic high. After logic, uh, after point B, we have the fixed logic, which is acting as a logic low. So if your application is a digital circuit design, digital circuit design, in that case, you will consider this region of operation and this region of operation, you will not consider the range between a and B. Let me repeat it again. If your target is to design a digital circuit designs where we have only two fixed logics, either zero or one, in that case, we need to consider only these ranges, this range and this range. Okay. But if your application is the analog circuit designing, analog VLSI circuit designing, you need to consider the range between A and B. How this range is effective? Let me explain briefly. Detail we will see later on. But uh, this is really important to explain how this one is important. So let me change the color so that you can. Let us assume this one is the VM. Okay. And uh, here we have, let us assume three different points. Okay. If I am providing the input signal like this, input signal something like this. So if you see the output one, at the output side, you are getting the behavior, something like this. What it means, the output signal is amplified version of the input signal. So this is what the analog circuit works. So you, you know these things in the analog electronics you have studied. Okay. So this is how this reason can be utilized for the analog circuit designing part. Okay. So uh more sharp cutoff so more uh, like if the sharpness is more in this one this region the gain will be higher okay you can achieve higher gain okay so this is all about this thing so i'm cleaning these things uh, <clears throat> so you may be able to understand what are the different reasons which are used in analog design and in the digital circuit designs okay so <clears throat> Okay, uh, I was talking about the noise margin. So as of now, we have uh, four important voltages, VOH, VOL, VIL, and VIH. Okay, where uh, here we have two output voltages and two input voltages. Okay, uh, uh, let me explain in detail again, like see this VOH, I just told you, this is the maximum output voltage when the output level is logic one. Okay, so you know all these things, 
Okay, so let us try to understand how to calculate the noise margin. Okay, so the noise margin is simply calculated by using these values, whatever we have, like V O H, V O L, and uh, and other two things. Okay, so if you can calculate. noise margin so we can have the two kind of noise margin nml and the second one could be nmh nml is uh, is decided with the lower voltages only either so in nml vil and voh is considered and whereas in v uh, in the nmh vih and voh is considered okay so if i have to calculate the noise margin for low in that case i need to uh, subtract v i l i need to write it like the v i l minus v o l okay why i am keeping v i l because this v i l is somewhat higher uh, higher than this v o l okay so that is why i am subtracting v o l from the v i l but you can uh, interchange it just make the mod of this because noise margin cannot be negative okay so you can interchange these values similarly if you have to calculate the noise margin um, for the uh, logic high in that case because voh is the maximum one which is the logic high so we need to calculate uh, we need to subtract vih from the voh so voh minus vih again i am saying you can interchange these things but find the modulus and that will become the noise margin okay so this is how we calculate the noise margin of any cmos based circuit okay so before going into the structure uh, let me uh, explain how this noise margin we have what is the noise immunity noise tolerance okay so basically noise margin is nothing but this is the noise tolerance for a digital circuit how much noise it can tolerate okay so for example let me draw one diagram and then you will be able to understand this, this thing whatever i am saying uh, <coughs> in case of any doubt definitely you are you are free to ask the question okay so let us assume i have a two logic levels one is the zero volt and let us assume the highest voltage is let us assume this is the vdd okay and uh, here let us assume v i h we can have okay and uh, let's assume v i l we can have here somewhere v i l and yes yeah, so there is some range this is the range for this one and this is the range for this one Similarly, you can draw the same kind of a structure for the uh, output as well. So this is for input. Similarly, you can draw it for the output. And the logic level could be something like, let us assume here we have the zero. And here we can have some VOL. So and now if you see here, VIL is somewhat higher than this VOL, right? So uh, 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 what, whatever the output uh, voltage. So the VOL will be lower than the VIL. So I need to keep somewhere here, something like this. Okay. So this is the VOL. Similarly, we have the VDD over here and VIH and the VOS. So VOS is somewhat higher than this VIS. So this is this will also be something like this. So this is VOH and the graph will be something like this. Now, the noise margin is calculated based on these differences. Whatever the difference you have, this difference is nothing but this is the noise margin higher and this difference is known as noise margin lower. Now, the key conclusion here is, and this, this reason is nothing but this is a transition region.
Okay. Now the key point of consideration here is if the the VOH is very close to VDD. Okay. If the VOH is very close to VDD, in that case, noise margin will increase. Like noise margin high will be increased. So simply. Uh, the amount of variation, simply noise margin indicates that the amount of variation that uh, the signal level that can be allowed while considering it as a logic high or logic low. Okay. So suppose if the noise margin is very less. Okay. And if you are getting the output voltage, something like this, and there is a small variation in the output. So if the small variation, it can tolerate, but it means the noise margin is very less. Okay, so the simply noise margin indicates that if at the output voltage, if there is some uh, uh, some uh, variation in the logic, then still it can be considered as a logic low or logic high if you have the high noise margin. Let me repeat it again. Uh, the noise margin are the amount of variation in the signal level that can be allowed while the signal is transmitting from high to low. Okay. Uh, or, or, or or one input to the another output. Okay, so this is the reason reason at which uh, it can tolerate the noise and the variations. Okay, so noise margin should be as high as possible. Okay, so this is all about the uh, noise immunity and the noise margin. So noise immunity is simply like if the noise margin is uh, higher then the uh, it will be more immune to the noise okay so the more variation even though there is a more variation it can it can take the decision whether logic output logic is high or low okay now uh, the important thing comes into the picture which you asked the question so let me uh, answer your question first and yeah so your answer will be uh, uh, your question will be answered here only so now let us talk about the static CMOS inverter, how the static CMOS inverter looks like and how the behavior will be. Okay, so the static CMOS inverter is basically like uh, if you if you can recall the uh, the generic diagram, uh, we have the two blocks, one is the load and the second one is the driver and we used to connect the input of this uh, both load and driver at the same node and we need to take some output from here. So this is the normal diagram. Now, the question is, if I want to make an inverter, in that case, what will be the inside load and what will be the inside this driver? So let me draw a simplest circuit, okay? And I will tell you why I am doing like this, okay? Uh, later on, I will also discuss the different variant of this load as well. So you will be able to understand definitely it is not necessary, then you need to keep transistors only as a load. You can keep other devices as well as a load. Okay, okay. so uh, this is how the static CMOS inverter looks like. Okay, here in place of load, we have placed the PMOS transistor and in place of driver, we have placed the NMOS transistor. But one, may, one question may come from your side. Like what happens if we interchange the PMOS with the NMOS and vice versa? Okay, so we will check that logic as well. Okay, but for now, uh, we have placed the PMOS transistor because I just told you, if I'm talking about CMOS based structure, in that case, the, the, the load and the drivers are complementary to each other. If the load is PMOS transistor, then the driver will be NMOS transistor. Okay, so what I have done, I have just placed this uh, PMOS transistor as a load and the NMOS transistor as a driver. Okay. Now, uh, the important thing, like how this circuit will behave, let us try to analyze these two things. Uh, before analyzing these things, let us try to recall why, what I, uh, I, I, I taught you in, in the previous lecture, the last slide, which was the recap, okay? So if somehow you can recap the previous lecture, I just drawn the behavior of the NMOS transistor and the PMOS transistor, something like this. Like if it is the VGS, so this is what we 
uh, we uh, we discussed in the previous class like and this if this is an id so for the uh, uh, nmos transistor this is the characteristics and for the pmos transistor this is the characteristics sorry this is not correct okay so this is for the pmos and this is for nmos so if you can recall the the behavior was something like this okay now let us try to see if i am providing input zero here okay so let me label the potentials okay so this terminal is the gate this is also the gate this is the source terminal this is the drain terminal this is the drain and this is the source okay um, one may ask like why i have uh, kept the source at the top and the drain at the bottom in the pmos transistor and the vice versa why the source is at higher pot potential and the drain is at higher potential the simple answer is like the direction of charge carrier in the pmos we have the holes and in nmos we have the electron and the directions of these two are opposite to each other and in 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 uh, the pmos transistor the current the direction of current flow is uh, current flow is from source to drain that is why we kept source at the higher potential than the drain one okay uh, because this uh, the, the mosfets are the symmetrical devices you can interchange it based on the current direction okay so that is why we have kept source at the top and the drain at the bottom or at the lower potential in the pmos and the vice versa case for the nmos transistor okay now the thing is i need to check what are the different conditions at which this uh, this circuit will work okay so vgs so if you see here this is the gate voltage and uh, let me this is the gate voltage for the pmos transistor and this is the source voltage for the pmos transistor now if you see the vgs is if i am providing input zero i am just talking about the digital system designs okay so if input is equal to zero what it means the gate voltage of this pmos transistor will be zero volt okay and the source voltage of this pmos transistor is Uh, sorry uh, i just made one mistake this should not be v out oh, sorry this should not be v out this should be v d d yeah, you have v d d oh, sorry uh, but no one uh, noticed it right it means that you are not sincere about the class okay fine <clears throat> so here if you see uh, uh, i am talking about the digital circuit designing in that case if input is equal to at, uh, at the logic low and if input is at logic low in that case vg will be zero volt and here if you see the vs is at vgd so the vgs for this pmos transistor will be minus vgd okay so the vgs is minus vdd so you can see here if the vgs is minus vdd which is the lower than this vth it it indicates that the pmos transistor will be in on state there will be some flow of current okay so if i am providing v in at logic 0 in that case the pmos transistor will be at logic high uh, a pmos transistor will be in on state because there is a negative vgs minus vg i mean minus vgs will be minus vdd and in this case the pmos transistor will be in on state okay so if this is in on state and now let us check about let us try to check the uh, nmos transistor as well because the v in was 0 volt i have kept it is it is like 0 volt so vg for the nmos transistor is 0 and the vs for the nmos transistor is zero so the vgs for this nmos transistor is also zero volt okay so if vgs is zero volt and from this behavior you can see if the vgs is zero volt then uh, like this uh, uh, this transistor nmos transistor will not be activated okay so the nmos transistor will not be activated so this will be in the off state so the equivalent circuit will look like this if i have provided 
the V in is equal to zero, zero volt. In this case, the equivalent circuit will be like, this will be the on state. Here you will have a open circuit. This is nothing but this is the VDD. From here, you are getting the output. And this is the simple circuit. It will look like, yes, definitely there will be some finite resistance of this one, but ideally I'm considering this is the short circuit. But yes, practically there will be resistance of on transistor. So we will discuss those things later, right? So just, I'm just making the simple uh, structure. So if you see here, if I'm providing logic zero at the input side, this VDD is directly connected to the output. What it means, the output will be logic high. So this circuit is acting as an inverter. Similarly, let us talk about the second case. If the V in is equal to VDD, okay? So if V in is equal to VDD, then what will happen? This VG will become VDD. Vs is VDD. So VDD minus VDD, that will become zero. So VGS for the PMOS transistor will be zero. So if the PMOS of the VGS for the PMOS transistor is zero, means the PMOS transistor will be in off state. And see here, if VG is VDD, then the VGS for this NMOS transistor will become VDD. And if it is VDD means which is higher than this threshold voltage, means the NMOS transistor will be in on state. So the diagram will look like this. There will be some open circuited and there is a, some short circuited path and the output will be here. So because the ground is directly connected, so we will observe logic low at the output. Okay. So based on the input and output, uh, output voltages, we can decide which of the transistor is on and which of the transistor is off. So this is the ideal behavior uh, for both the logics if I'm talking about the CMOS inverter. But the important thing is, uh, you may ask, uh, in, uh, technically, how these transistors are behaving if I'm providing the input zero volt and if I'm changing the input from zero volt to VDD. So at each instant of, uh, at each voltage instant, how this, both the transistors will be have like we know that there are three region of operation in any of the transistor one is the cutoff region second one is the uh, linear region and the third one is the saturation region so we need to check uh, which are the different regions in a circuit that is in existence and which of the transistor will be activated which of the transistor will be deactivated so this is really very important thing and that need to be considered so because i think this is the uh, we have end the session like this is, uh, I think the time is over, so we cannot extend further. Uh, but tomorrow we will continue the same thing uh, from the same slide only. And we will try to see more detailed structure of the CMOS in water and its behavior. Okay. And we will also try to see how, uh, how this uh, the inverter characteristics comes like how like in the previous slide we we saw the inverter characteristic is something like this but there should be some reason like which of the transistor is in cutoff which of the transistor is in the linear which of the transistor is in the in the saturation region so based on this functionality uh, uh, the characteristics of the circuit behaves like an inverter so what are those uh, stages i will discuss uh, in the tomorrow's lecture so I'm closing the session here only. In case of any doubt, please let me know. Uh, either you can write email to me. I will uh, try to answer as soon as possible. So uh, now I'm closing the session.